Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of ENF TV. Uh, today we're joined by the brilliant Jason Gossip, who is an experienced sales and revenue management uh, professional. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. I like the brilliant bit, that was good. <laughs> good afternoon, Tom, how are you? Um, but no, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you, all right? I'm very well, I'm very well. How are you doing? Yeah, very good, very good. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, so, Jason, as we've already discussed, this series is all about uh, giving candidates that are on the market right now a platform uh, to be able to uh, tell us about themselves, tell us about their sort of experiences, what it's like out there on the job market at the moment. Um, and I suppose as well, of course, promote themselves to any potential employers that might be looking to recruit um, but maybe aren't in a position to sort of actively put adverts out and things like that. So hopefully building up dialogues where maybe you wouldn't have done before. Um, so a great way to start this episode is really to understand a bit more about you, your background, obviously what your last role was. Uh, so please do, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I um, came out of college at 18 and um, like many, I didn't, I didn't really want to go down the university route. Um, I wanted to get stuck into the world of work. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, so um, I ended up, um, I worked um, for a mail order fish and tackle company for um, a while. Um, I worked selling windows. Um, I didn't really get the, the zest for it. Um, and I applied for a job as a hotel receptionist. Um, didn't get that, but then the, the GM at the time must have seen something in there. Um, because he ran back and said, We've got an exciting role as um, a special events coordinator. Uh, and at the time, the hotel was doing um, really well from party nights, from dinner and discos, from cabaret. Um, and he wanted me to kind of head up that um, and, and drive that forward. And looking back, it was quite an exciting time. I mean, the hotel often had 400 people in on a Friday, 400 on a Saturday. Um, watching a Motown act and it was up to me to dream up these weird and wonderful um, events you know and try and stay ahead of the you know what it's like trying to st stay ahead of the curve in terms of uh, attracting people um, so I, I did really enjoy that um, and, and, and from there I kind of that, that's the first time that I realized that I wanted to work in hospitality um, before then you know as I said I didn't have a clue really um, so from there, I, I embarked on um, a bit of a journey through um, the hotel's training management scheme. So it, it, it was kind of a couple of months in housekeeping, a um, couple in, uh, on reception. It was about 18 months in total, I think. But it gave me a broad feel for the whole operation of the, the unit, and not just my little special events desk, as it were. Um, from there, I was promoted to um, events manager. Um, and, and then very quickly, um, a position came up as um, corporate sales manager. Um, and, and I was really interested in that. Um, I'd, I'd kind of got the, the book for, for sales. I knew that I, I was fairly good at sales. Um, and, and this came up. And so um, I applied for that and, and got it. Um, and it was entirely different. It was such a shock. I, I remember on, on the first day sitting at my desk um, and thinking, right, what, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd been in reactive sales for, for years and, you know, you pick up the phone and you convert. And here was me having to make the calls. I remember just vividly thinking, who, who, who do I ring? <laughs> what, what do I do? <laughs> I ring, ring, the, ring the chamber and ring some contacts. And but very quickly, I, I discovered that this was, um, f for me, not really work. I mean, I was being paid to speak to people and, and network and, 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 and chat to them, go out and knock on the door and, and get, yeah, get the business in. But for me, it was, it was fairly effortless. Um, and I found that I, I kind of fell in love with it at that stage. Um, part of my role, I mean, it was an independent hotel and, and, and part of the role, I think very often with independents and, and smaller hotels, they'll, they'll kind of, if they see you're good at something, they'll kind of give you more and you take on like more and more. Um, and it was not really a, a massively forward-thinking operation in terms of revenue management. 
Um, and so the GM said to me one day, "Will you look after rates?" And that, that's kind of what it what it was. It wasn't revenue management. It was it was pricing. And will you look after rates? And I said, "Yeah, of course." And, and it was around the time that OTAs were kind of exploding, um, and it wasn't kind of you know in the old days where you just change your rate on the board or you know and and, and it's changed for the day. It was um, overseeing all the OTA sites and, and different channels. Um, and I found that I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but as I say, at the time it was just race. The, the more I dug into it, and I discovered that this is actually, this is a thing. It is, it, it's revenue management. I became more and more interested in it. Um, there wasn't really the, the coaching there at the time um, that a lot of people get to, to develop me. So it was kind of up to me to delve into um, exactly how I could progress. Um, I, I did a two-year hospital course, um, which was really good and really opened my eyes to, um, well, page reports, to pick up charts, um, to analysis, um, which, which was really good. Um, and one thing led to another, and I thought, you know, I, you know, I need better Excel skills to do this. You know, that, that's obviously something that's come up and is essential. So I um, went out and did an Excel course. Um, and, and basically taught myself uh, with a lot of help revenue management. Um, had some great success in the early days uh, because this was a hotel that wasn't yielding, you know, didn't really have a, a, a grasp of revenue management as such. And so, what a massive impact could be made by um, employing some some basic techniques. Um, took a job as a group um, or a cluster revenue manager. And I was in charge of three very different hotels, a big hotel up in the lakes, um, which was a 100 bed uh, coaching hotel, predominantly dealing 90% with groups. Um, hotel down in Telford, which was a bit of a, a mix between corporate and leisure. Um, and one in Yorkshire, which was um, corporate late pickup. Um, so that was a real challenge simply because three hotels were given to me that were vastly different different markets um, and so I had to kind of yeah change the way I was working it was um, it was certainly a challenge at the time I had six years doing that um, again some great success we had two two consecutive years of seven percent uh, growth on rooms revenue um, coming up to 2019 um, the group was um, well, the, the hotel that I was based at was, was sold, so I was kind of in a position where, what do I do? Um, I've got a five-year-old boy at home, and my home was in South Yorkshire, so I elected to stay with the new owners. Um, and that takes us up to current um, distressing times, <laughs> um, where um, the hotel shut down. Um, we're, we're going through redundancy at the minute, but it um, but kind of, uh, the furlough period, for me, it started um, early April, and, and so I was at home quite a lot, um, but, but still employed the same mentality. I wanted to, I wanted to learn, I wanted to uh, improve myself. So um, I started doing um, uh, SQL, learning SQL, um, teaching myself that. So that's been really good, and um, yeah, I mean, I suppose for the for the future with me. Um, I, I've not really kind of come from a background where revenue management managers typically come from uh, in the way that I've not come from reception, reservations. Um, I've come from a sales background. So it's advantageous, I think, to me because I've, I've got a lot of the softer skills, I think, that maybe traditionally other revenue managers have kind of struggled with. Um, I've done corporate sales, I've done marketing. Um, knocked on people's doors for business um, and so um, yeah I think yeah the future for me I, I think really when you look at what's kind of happening at the moment and if you watch a lot of podcasts um, and things like that there's a lot of talk about commercial leaders and, and revenue management becoming a, a redundant term and I think that the commercial leaders of the, of the future will have to have had some exposure to sales um, some exposure to operations, um, be able to calculate minimum price points uh, and have a good all-round uh, experience of the hotel 
Uh, and so I'm kind of pleased that I have come up through sales and through meetings and events in the way that I have. I, I can't agree with you more. Um, it sounds like you've been watching a couple of my past episodes. All um, of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I honestly couldn't agree with you more. I think your, your background in sales with those soft skills that sales naturally comes with is something that revenue management has notoriously and historically always been missing. Um, and the fact that you do have that experience, the fact that you do have that background, as you so rightly said, is advantageous. Uh, it's exactly where the market is heading. Um, arguably, it should have been heading there a long while ago. Um, but I think with the disruption that's been happening more recently, it's made that change a necessity. The, the less of the silos, we always hear this term, stop the silos, but it's true. We do need to uh, bring these departments and these functions together to create this more rounded commercial role. Um, and I, I completely agree with you. I think that is the future of where we're heading. And with your skill set, the revenue management, sales, and obviously marketing exposure you've had as well, it's going to do nothing but put you in a stronger position. I think the ones that aren't taking the opportunity to uh, develop their skills, to focus on other areas of what they could be looking at, are going to be the ones behind the curve. Whereas people like yourself that have been doing various courses, that have been keeping themselves busy, um, will, will be the ones that, that succeed uh, down the line. Um, in, in terms of, I suppose, you know, the situation at the moment for yourself, we, we sort of came on quite nicely to this question, but what's your experience been like on the job market, you know, on the, on the ground um, sort of experiencing it at the moment? What's, what's your experience been like? Um, uh, you have a lot of people on LinkedIn saying that um, they've applied for hundreds and hundreds of jobs and um, they must feel utterly demoralised and defeated. Um, whereas I'm quite fairly new to uh, being on the job market. So um, I've applied for four, um, got two interviews. So if I could carry on with a 50% success rate, I'd be kind of happy. I would think, I don't think it's a sure. <laughs> But um, yeah, I think I've. Um, it's obviously hard out there. I mean, there's there's ten times more candidates on on the market, um, and there's ten times you know fewer jobs than there were in say January, December, January, February time. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is it is really difficult. Um, I, I kind of preempted this coming quite early, and I thought you know let's get my CV up today. Um, and get it reformatted because it was like I'd not applied for jobs for, for a while and it was a little bit like war and peace whereas I think what people want these days is they want skills and achievements listed and bullet pointed and they don't want it to go over one or two pages um, so it was um, it was something that I had to kind of look at um, and take some advice on getting it um, and just preempting kind of what was happening really so I, I've been as soon as I found out that the hotel was closing, I could get straight onto it. Um, so, um, yeah, I suppose to the people who are, um, have been applying for hundreds and hundreds of jobs, it's like just don't get too uh, too down about it. I think um, so. You know, you're right in saying that um, you know they are applying. People are applying for hundreds of jobs and and not getting anything back, or or they're getting some feedback or not getting interviews and so on and so forth. And it is difficult out there, but you know, as you've so rightly proven, uh, there will be interviews out there. They, they, they just will be. It's just a case of keep going, stay positive, and obviously keep, um, keep up the effort in trying to get back into employment. Um, I suppose in terms of, sort of keeping yourself motivated, you actually mentioned something earlier about looking to do courses, and you've been obviously exploring different ways of developing your skills. How, how have you been keeping yourself motivated during, obviously, the, the difficult times that we've all been going through? As I, as, as I mentioned, I've been trying to immerse myself in learning, really. Um, I've done, um, well, I think it's, it's the golden age of uh, online courses at the minute, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, everything's online because of uh, fluctuating lockdowns and a lot of companies are putting paid for courses out there for free. Um, or for um, a substantial discount. So I don't really think there's any excuse not to immerse yourself in something 
you know, whether it's learning for pleasure or whether it's learning um, to progress your career. Um, so as I said, I've been doing um, SQL uh, for a while now, um, free courses, just using SQL 2 and uh, different platforms like that. Um, so that's kind of how I've tackled it. I, I've read lots of blogs, uh, lots of listened to lots of podcasts like, like yours, the Girls on Revenue Hacks, um, loads and loads out there. Um, I did Google Digital Garage qualification in marketing, which was um, good to brush up on my marketing skills. Um, so that's kind of how I've tackled it. And I think one of the, the main things is to make progress. I think it, if you can move forward a little bit every day, and at the end of the day say, well, yeah, actually, I've applied for five jobs, but um, I've reached out to some contacts on, on LinkedIn, um, as well as the usual stuff. I've done the washing up, I've taken a dog for a walk, I've gone for a run. <laughs> yeah. I think um, reaching out to contacts on, on LinkedIn is, uh, and people that you've worked with in the past as well is, is crucial. Um, I mean, I put a call to uh, my old boss last week, and um, I said, look, I know you're struggling, but you know, is there anything I can do for you? He says, I'll get back to you. And um, he says, yeah, I can do you 10 hours a week just consulting, uh, doing a bit of consultation work for me. Um, sorry, I can't give you more. I said, no, that's fantastic, because that's 10 hours work a week that I didn't have, had I not made that call. Um, so I think, think about family and friends, think about contacts on LinkedIn, people that you work for, and um, yeah, just try and make a little bit of progress every day. I think, um well, actually ties in quite nicely and I, I think there's a bit of crossover there actually with uh, the next question which is is all about well as as you'll know now we, we've got a following and we've got an audience and, and of course a lot of them are on the market right now and we're trying to build up that community and, and that dialogue between people um so i suppose your experience um from, from obviously your perspective your background and obviously what you've seen on the market so far what advice would you give to other people that do find themselves looking for a job, that do find themselves getting bogged down with the with the declines or, or the no feedbacks and all this sort of stuff? What, what advice would you give to other people about that? I think uh, for me, the main thing is to be structured with your day. So on a Sunday, I'll, I'll write a list um, Monday to Friday of the next week, and I'll have um, a few tasks on that I want to accomplish each day. And so in that way, I treat it like a working day. Um, with the work being trying to find work. Um, so um, I'll say Monday I'll, I'll post twice on LinkedIn. Um, I'll do, um, I'll apply for those three jobs that I saw. Um, as well as, as I say, your, your, your kind of standard stuff that you do for your, your mental health. You know, I'll, I'll go, you know, I'm going to go for a run at this time. I'm going to do the school run. I'll make tea. Um, but treat it as much as you can as a, a working day and have, have some structure to to what you're doing. I think if kind of you just see days and months and you know opening up ahead of you, it, you just think, well, how am I going to possibly fill the time? And it can just lead to you kind of not being very active at all. Um, so certainly be structured. I was going to say, did you find, were you um, sort of structured in your approach sort of immediately or did you sort of think to yourself, you know what, this isn't working for me, I'm going to put a plan in place and you've seen sort of that progression or that sort of elevation in activity or, or was it something you've always just been hot on anyway? I think as revenue managers are um, fairly structured in what we do because we've got it's, um, it's a lot of procedure and um, I'm uh, one of my tips is just to make lists you know I have lists of lists of lists I have daily lists I have weekly I have monthly um, I'm so obsessive I sometimes Put something on my list after I've done it just so I can get the endorphins from ticking it off <laughs> which is crazy but it's um, I think if you can make lists it just adds to that that kind of structure um, linked to the lists and the structure if you can have goals on what you're doing um, on what you want to do I want to achieve so many interviews by the end of this month um, or this week you know that that just again have it as a daily goal or a weekly goal or a monthly goal um, just as you would do at work you know just as you would have goals at work you know you want to increase turnover or rep bar by this um, you do the same you're basically following the same 
mental pattern that you would do while you were at work. Um, the last thing I think is to, to have some time off. I mean, it is. Some people may let it consume them. Um, whereas I, have, I always have weekends off. Um, it's Monday to Friday and then Saturday and Sunday. I, I, I just think, right, that's my downtime. I'll, I'll do what I normally do. I'll spend time with family. Um, I'll, I'll go running. You know, we've got stuff on. And I try not to think about it too much. Um, and that kind of helps me recharge my brain ready for Monday or Sunday night where I put that list together and like, right, let's go again. Let's look at what we're going to do next week. So I suppose it's this sense of... Um achievement as well you know you put a list together you see at the end of the week all the stuff is ticked off right that was a successful week i'm able to almost quantify my success in my job search which i think a lot of people I actually wrote an article on this uh, last year um but people on the job market whether that be now or you know, months ago last year in, in fact um and in fact for, for some time They've always sort of quantified, or they, you know, you'd end your day looking for a job and you'd say to your husband, your wife, your kids, or whatever, oh, I applied for uh, 50 jobs today. You know, I feel great because I applied for 50 jobs. When in fact, if you break it down, you've clicked apply now and your, your CV has been sent to 50 potential you know, employers. And my sort of argument to that is always, well, don't ever stop with the apply now button. Don't ever just say, oh, I've applied for 50 jobs. Pick, you know, put on your list pick five of those and next week call them. Pick the top five, the thing, the top, I don't know, the five that you think actually that one, that one actually looks really good. I would love yeah. that one. Call them, make a bit more, connect with the, the, the hiring manager on, on LinkedIn or whatever it is, just take that extra step and just choose five of them. Um, and that advice has always sort of resonated with me because I've always thought that makes sense. You know, there's no sort of, there's no comeback to that. It just makes sense. Pick five of the top ones that you've seen and make a little bit more, uh, I suppose, a drive to, to attain that. Um, yeah. And as you say, that list of being able to just tick those off, a lot of people at the moment, I know I've found it, but I almost feel like the weeks are just turning into a, a blur. You know, they all just become one day. Um, and it's sort of having that sort of end of the week, right, what have I achieved? What have I done? What's next week look like? And then, as you say, you take the weekend for yourself. You take the weekend to spend time with your family, get out of the house, whatever it is. Um, so, no, I, I completely agree with you on the fact of getting that satisfaction of ticking those boxes. Um, so, no, I, I think that's a great one. Um, guys, whoever's obviously watching this at the moment, I know that Jason and I would love to hear what your advice would be, what, what you think people uh, could be doing right now to, to keep themselves motivated, but also what advice you'd give to other people on the job market. So please do comment in the comment box below on what your advice would be. Um, Jason, I know that obviously what we've spoken about today and, and a, a number of points that you've touched on will certainly resonate with a lot of our audience. So I wanna say a big thank you to you for taking the time out of your uh, schedule and obviously taking you away from your lists this week. Um, to, to, You're to, on my list. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Uh, guys, don't forget, see who's on next week's episode now. <laughs>